seminar. We decided to start this initiative because uh, we need to help our doctoral students to be prepared for the final thesis defense procedure. In particular, uh, we are interested in uh, facilitating and encouraging uh, research discussion. And I hope all of you will contribute somehow, just asking questions and providing comments and suggestions to Dmitry. And today we, start, we are starting with the first uh, presentation of Dmitry Sokolov, who is going to present his uh, results of his research has been conducted during his doctoral studies about human resource management systems and knowledge intensive terms. And also we have two discussions today. Uh, Professor Tatiana Betan uh, Gavrilova, who, who, who will come in uh, very soon, I hope. And also, we have uh, our youngest scholar, uh, Dmitry Evgenievich Kucherov, uh, who is also our director of our master's program. And uh, we have uh, our, we are going to schedule our research seminar as following. Uh, Dmitry has 20 minutes for his presentation, and then we have five, seven minutes for our, oh no, then we have a question and discussion. Uh, actually, you can ask any questions. I, I hope we will, uh, we will be able to, to do it in 20 minutes. And then we have five, seven, or 10 minutes for uh, our discussion opponents. And finally, afterwards, uh, we have like a free discussion and you know, question answers and additional comments. Perhaps you will come up uh, after all presentation and after all comments. Okay? Thank you so much. Please go ahead. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, and thank you all for coming today. Um, my name is Dmitry Sokolov. Uh, I'm third year doctoral student, and today I want to present uh, doctoral program final thesis. It, it, this is pre-defense procedure, uh, but uh, here I collected all my work that I did during the three years of doctoral program. Almost three years. So let me start with the motivation of this research. Uh, we uh, initially positioned our research as, a, as an integrative answer to, to the question how firms manage people, why HR professionals torture other people with all these uh, training programs, compensation, and etc. in a more systematic level, why they do it uh, holistically. We know how probably individual practices work. Uh, it, the, the goal is usually straightforward. Training has some metrics and it has some target. But when practices merge into complex systems, it becomes really interesting how these systems may operate. And uh, especially this is important uh, in the context of ongoing transformation in, in the field of human resource management because it, it, it slowly and maybe not so slowly recently shifts from more traditional functional uh, level to a, as a strategic dynamic capability. Now for firms, especially for those firms who uh, that compete uh, on the basis of knowledge, uh, it is uh, strategic dynamic capability in other words. So uh, what is known on this question in the literature is that human resource management systems, first there is a consensus that as I said HR practices sh should, should be studied not individually, but as a complex systems, uh, the, the holistically. Uh, so uh, these HRM systems from the literature are internally and externally integrated bundles of human resource management practices. So uh, internal integration means that these practices should uh, be aligned with themselves because they may have interactions and synergies, both positive or negative, so some pr practices may contradict to each other. Uh, so uh, this is internally should be an internally coherent set of practices. But despite that, it, it also should be uh, integrated with, with strategy and with other contextual factors of organizations. We, we just can't uh, universally apply all kind of systems in every organization. It should naturally fit every organization. Uh, so another important question in the research, uh, not, not quite question, but uh, debate, is about what should constitute HRM systems, what practices should be included. Uh, and the most, uh, at least for this research, 
the most convenient answer is provided by AMO framework, which divides HRM system into th three so-called domains. First is ability enhancing practices that target knowledge, skills, and abilities of individual people. Uh, those uh, may uh, include selection, training, and development, and so on. Uh, second is motivation enhancing practices. Those include compensation, uh, performance evaluation, and uh, everything that uh, drives motivation and efforts of employees. And finally, opportunity enhancing practices of so basically all the others. Uh, they uh, contribute to, uh, uh, they drive employee, they, they may be skilled, may be motivated, but may not have uh, enough uh, uh, opportunities to contribute. So the, the, all, all those practices are targeted at this. Uh, the good example is employee involvement, for instance, in, in the decision making in organizations. Uh, it is also important to know that there are just massive amount of literature that link human resource management practices with different uh, outcomes of the firm. Uh, those, may, at the very least, uh, this includes performance, employee attitudes, and uh, beha behavior, uh, innovation, and many others. Uh, so it is like common knowledge in the field, in the strategic human resource management, that uh, human resource management systems uh, have performance effects. Uh, but uh, we identified four, uh, on two slides, four research gaps uh, that we want to fill by this research, by this complex uh, multi-publicational uh, multi research. So f first is uh, there is lack of uh, knowledge on specific internal linkages. Yes, we know that systems should be integrated internally, but uh, what configuration, what specific linkages should exist between different practices, between different uh, groups of practices, we actually know very little about. So, and I, every of research gaps I try to illustrate with the uh, quote from top research, and here, for instance, Boone uh, and colleagues in the, their systematic literature review write that we still know little about the theorized systems elements and how synergies and interaction in an HR systems operate. So another uh, lim limitation of current studies regards uh, strategic fit issues. So uh, he here, for, for y yes, there are studies that connected, uh, that, that uh, established the strategic f fit between, uh, well, let's say so, uh, of strategic fit of uh, uh, business strategies of firms, but uh, other uh, contextual factors, such as probably other operational strategies or different uh, types of firms, should be investigated more closely. And here, in this research, we have found at least two important contingent factors or strategic fit factors. Uh, and here is, I made this picture just for illustration uh, of th these two gaps. So uh, this is how uh, HRM systems are represented in conceptual papers. So those are some bundles of practices that are internally fit and targeted on different outcomes. So importantly, they're internally connected and target driven. And this is how it is usually measured in, uh, in real research. So it is, uh, it is measured just as, I just as index with average scores for all the practices. So we should uh, really question how meaningful the results of this kind of indices. And for instance, high performance work systems, which is a fancy word of saying human resource management systems, but more universal. Uh, yeah, and this is also important that uh, these kind of systems in, in current research are predominantly universal for all organizations. Just that there is a set of practices that are measured everywhere on every context and they should drive performance. Uh, another gap is uh, th there is little known about about mechanisms that drive uh, performance effects of HRM systems. Uh, th there are different mediating models that are can be viewed as uh, mechanisms of different performance effects, but uh, we, we don't know about that structure of this relationship, how mechanisms work, how different components of HRM systems uh, connected to different components of this mediating mechanism or different components of performance. Uh, and finally, uh, it is also rarely attempted to distinguish 
traditional, more traditional, more uh, okay, let's say so, yeah, more traditional human personnel management systems and those HRM systems of uh, more knowledge intensive firms. And we know that, that there is huge difference because for knowledge intensive firms, uh, as we call them in this study, uh, it is especially important and HRM is uh, the uh, more like a strategic dynamic capability unlike traditional firms where it is more operational peripheral supporting function. Um, okay. And uh, this uh, was reflected in the number of research objectives. So the first, we tried to identify uh, what the HRM systems concept is. Then we review the peculiarities, features of human resource management systems in knowledge intensive context. Uh, then we connect human resource management and intellectual capital resources of the firm as these uh, mechanisms that drive performance effects. Then uh, we uh, then we consider human knowledge management strategies as the strategic fit factor uh, in this relationship. Uh, that is fifth also about this. So here is more on conceptual level and here uh, is to actually testing this. And uh, six is uh, to try to evaluate what, you know, what configurations implying different internal linkages can be there in uh, HRM systems and knowledge intensive firms. Uh, here I pictured uh, the th theories that I used, two, two main ones is strategic human resource management and strategic knowledge management uh, and those are different concepts used in this and I try, tried to uh, put uh, my objectives on different uh, uh, interceptions of these circles. So f first is, okay. First is uh, what is HRM systems more conceptually, uh, what is, is in KIFs, uh, then uh, relationship with intellectual capital as this mechanism uh, of performance effects. F uh, fourth is strategic fit of knowledge management strategies. Uh, fifth is uh, this testing, so it is also about strategic fit. And finally, uh, sixth is uh, in internal fit issues our attempt to uh, capture this internal fit. Uh, so here's the summary of publications uh, uh, th that com compose uh, our portfolio. So first two papers are conceptual papers where we discuss the literature, critically assess literature and try to build the models that would explain and uh, this is preliminary work for our uh, empirical papers. So uh, th there are uh, two, uh, two uh, conceptual papers. One is systematic literature review where, where we uh, mm, address the second objective of uh, what, what are the features of human resource management systems in, in knowledge intensive firms and specifically here we focused on professional service firms. Uh, the fourth is highlighted because uh, I wanted to st st stop here in more detail because I position this paper as, a, um, as the core of my research uh, because it encompasses all the uh, findings from the conceptual uh, work and uh, uh, it, basically, it uh, answers most of the objectives, it addresses most of the object, objectives. Not, not most, but three or four. Uh, then, uh, fifth paper is a uh, qualitative paper where we, uh, I, I, I also, uh, well, th then uh, further I will discuss fourth in more detail, fifth and sixth as uh, empirical papers. Uh, but those two more in brief, so uh, here is qualitative paper where we in-depth analyzed uh, uh, HRM systems in knowledge intensive firms, namely agile knowledge intensive firms as a bright representatives of uh, knowledge intensive firms. And finally, uh, he, here we applied fuzzy set qualitative comparative analysis on the sample of uh, knowledge intensive firms. Here another contribution is also compare these agile firms and more on that later and more traditional knowledge intensive firms, but still there are important contribution uh, regarding internal fit to, uh, to, to this very thesis. Uh, and uh, two remaining are conference papers, those are most 
mostly early works, uh, and those are only conference papers that were published. So not, not of the all the conferences that I participated were published, but th those uh, also quite um, uh, consist some, some clarification regarding the concepts that are important also for thesis. And here, uh, how much time do I have remaining? Uh, we have six, almost seven. Okay, then, then uh, let me really quickly go through all this paper. So I, I will focus only on uh, uh, the most important part. So first of all, uh, yeah, it is called uh, Human Resource Management Systems. Uh, sorry, S, and intellectual capital is the relationship universal. So uh, we try to re-elaborate the relationship between human resource management systems and intellectual capital resources, which are human capital, social capital, and organizational capital. This is a classification of UNT, uh, very, very common. Uh, but uh, in general level, this relationship is already established. So we try to go more in depth of this relationship in order to uncover like, these mechanisms, what, what dimensions, of uh, what, 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 what these relationships can be more structurally. Uh, so yeah, and those are papers where th this uh, relationship was uh, established. So there are a lot of actually works on that. But uh, the problem with all of them is first is that they were either on a very general level, so measuring, for instance, HR site as a general construct, as I illustrated earlier, uh, as high performance board systems as a single index, uh, or uh, the dependent variable intellectual capital was not the full intellectual or, or the, uh, the, the aggregated variable intellectual capital. Or another possibility was that uh, th there was a relationship between specific practices, for instance, training and development and human capital, some motivation uh, and uh, social capital as a, for, for, in Article 4, 2014, Human Resource Management. Uh, and uh, in, uh, the, the, another idea, so the purpose of this paper is twofold. So another purpose is uh, try to uh, examine the knowledge management strategy as a very important thing for knowledge intensive firms as defining both intellectual capital that, that are targeted in these type of organizations and um, human, the choice of different human resource management practices. So the another purpose was to, uh, and another limitation of current research is uh, um, capture the strategic strategic field issues with knowledge management strategy as a new variable for, for this field. So uh, I, I know some of you already know this division. So th this is a knowledge management strategy of personalization and codification. Uh, those are not two distinct types of strategies, but rather organizations are usually located somewhere in between. But uh, one of strategies is usually acts as a predominant as, and another is uh, as supporting. So uh, the, the main difference is the personalization relies on accumulating knowledge in people and use uh, you, you use this knowledge from people uh, to solve some really complex and uh, customizable solutions. And in codification, it's in, co in, in contrast externalization knowledge from people, uh, keeping them in uh, external databases in order to reuse it many times after by maybe different people. So th those are different approaches. And uh, pursuing both in the same time is just uh, m maybe just too expensive for organizations. So that is why it is usually divided. Um, yeah, here is how we decompose the term systems and intellectual capital. I already said uh, a little bit about uh, AMO framework, and th this is uh, also very common for the field for, for intellectual capital division on human, social, and structural capital. Uh, we use the sample of 215 uh, knowledge intensive firms and the main criteria was here the industry criteria. We chose the industries that we be sure are knowledge intensive. Uh, those were 184 professional service firms and 31 knowledge intensive manufacturing firms. Those are uh, well, it is electronics, pharmaceuticals, uh, hardware, some robotics uh, and some. So we needed to ensure that, that those firms are knowledge intensive, as we call it in the, in the literature, call it so. Um, 
Okay. So uh, let me not stop here for too long. I just want to mention that uh, one of our variables were formative in nature. So that is why it is a little bit different approach to ensuring, uh, ensuring reliability and validity. So, and what was important is this uh, approach allows to uh, to set the weights of different practices. So what, what is unachievable in when we use single indexes? So th this uh, gives different weights to different practices. And we also important that we had three contract, constructs for, for the uh, HRM system. Uh, and here, is, here are the results. So we hypothesized first. Did I show you? Sorry, th there is no. <coughs> So, sorry, I had the, the picture of uh, and conceptual model. So I basically, con con okay, let me. Here, uh, ability to human capital, motivation to social capital and human capital, and opportunity to social and structural capital. So some of links were already uh, known from literature, but some of them I argued from the literature, from the content of uh, HRM system, from different practices, and from the co content of uh, components of intellectual capital. Okay, so the, the, uh, and there were also moderating hypothesis of, uh, of uh, uh, knowledge management strategies. So here, uh, uh, the, uh, this is the same model that on two slides, but here first uh, on the direct hypothesis. So we indeed found that ability enhancing practices uh, impacts human capital, motivation, social capital, and uh, human capital and social capital and opportunity, social and structural capital. And uh, th this model was like the, the had the best fit from all, all the other configurations. But uh, uh, it was not so fun with uh, moderating hypothesis. We we illustrated only one uh, moderating effect of codification and structural cap uh, opportunity enhancing. How much time do we have? Just yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, but please. Okay. Let, let me fi finish. So uh, here, direct hypothesis: only one of uh, moderation, moderating, uh, and this basically proposes the strategic fit effects uh, in, in uh, at least one. This position suggests that uh, uh, this this uh, knowledge management strategy is important when choosing between different knowledge management. Uh, human resource management systems and their domains. Uh, briefly about findings of paper five, where we qualitatively uh, analyzed uh, two, knowledge intensive, uh, two knowledge intensive firms that use agile methodologies as Scrum or Kanban or uh, maybe others. So here, what is important that we also found one factor that was important as strategic fit, uh, and we need to test it in further in the research, uh, which is the strategic fit between human resource management and um, and uh, agile methodology approach to project management, basically. So, and two hour cases indicated the poor fit and the very good fit of HRM and agile. Uh, and here, the, the final paper, final empirical paper, was uh, exploring the configurations, the casual configurations of human resource management systems in different uh, types of uh, um, knowledge intensive firms. And here we found that uh, different configuration may exist, maybe a full configuration where all the uh, components of intellectual, uh, of uh, human resource management systems present. Uh, here, even absence is the condition for high performance. And some of them are like, uh, um, AO from M A M O. So here we call them A O, and here M O. So uh, th those are different configurations that still lead to high performance. Uh, here the dependent variable was it requires this methodology also dependent variable. So here the idea was the, uh, the dependent variable was uh, firm performance. Uh, yeah, and the, this is the final slide. Just what, what I want to, to wrap up everything. Uh, what I want to suggest that uh, we our research helps to provide the guidance for investment in human resource management that usually not lead to the expected results, but are still considered as a very good. Uh, um, 
directions for in, in, inter-organizational investment. So uh, the target-driven like guidance, how hum if you want to target human capital, just you want need to strengthen ability and motivation as as in our this uh, relationship. Uh, and yeah, it is, it's still this logic is univer not universal and that strategic fit factors such as knowledge management strategy and uh, approach to project management should be also considered. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. you very much. Thank you. Now we are open for the questions. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, well, I have uh, one uh, question. Uh, well, partly you answered uh, in the end. Uh, can you please return to the slide with the uh, measures? So. This is about uh, your main uh, research direction, yeah? And uh, here, uh, well, you mentioned uh, about firm performances and depend variable later, but uh, as I understood, it was only in one of your parts of your research. But here, I don't see any measures of uh, firm performance or profitability or anything. And I think that without it, uh, it's uh, just a uh, theoretical speculation without any practical applicability. Uh, yeah, we can say that. Uh, Okay, firms uh, that have a new simplification strategy, they more develop structural capital. Firm that, uh, firms that more develop uh, personalization strategy, they are more oriented on social capital. But it's a rather um, obvious outcome that uh, can be just based on uh, looking not uh, even on the business model, but on the use technology, on the industry peculiarity of the company. Yeah, so my question uh, would be uh, thus, uh, the following. In uh, those uh, parts of your research where you don't have uh, uh, firm profitability or any other firm performance measures uh, as uh, dependent or independent variables, uh, where you don't use uh, such uh, measures, uh, what are the uh, practical outcomes and practical applicability of uh, other parts of the research where you don't use the firm performance? Yeah, that, that is a very nice question. Uh, okay. We actually focus only on this specific relationship because um, so it is can be considered as a mediating model. So HRM, intellectual capital, and firm performance. So the right part of this is very well established. So we didn't go to here because we know there are relationships between intellectual capital and performance, and we know there are relationships between human resource management direct and performance. So we focus specifically here. The intention was to go in the in depth this relationship so we didn't want to just too many uh, constructs on the same model so here we wanted to uh, keep it slim so and focus on things that matter so and uh, well we we are built in the this stream of research so th since this is already known uh, but uh, we explore something he here on the left side of this uh, model. Yeah. Some more questions? Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. I have a question. How generalizable are your uh, findings? Is it a contextual boundary? Is it special specifically for Russia or uh, firm age or firm size? Because here you use as controls, not as a point for differentiation. <laughs> Uh, we try to compare your findings with Western um, articles. Is it the same? Well, I, 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 here we try to position the findings as uh, context-free, but of course those are the limitations of research. We used only data from Russia. Uh, well, from what I'm sure, we can generalize that those are knowledge-intensive firms in Russia, uh, and it is findings are more or less the same about just the on a general level uh, the relationship between human resource management systems and intellectual capital so it, it is known from other contexts that there is a, this relationship but what would be the uh, this structure of this relationship uh, we may not know because at the beginning you said that lack of convenient factors is the main gap actually and here you also have similar gap you don't use um, those factors contextual well, I can't use all of them. I, I approach it one uh, and uh, in qualitative study the second. So uh, I, I use the controls that we know that should uh, and can uh, influence this relationship, but I, I can inf take all of them. So this is an uh, important limitation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any small question? Uh, so I have a question. Uh, 
So uh, you, you have uh, knowledge intensive firms in the uh, topic of your study, but uh, really you, you mentioned knowledge intensive firms only as one out of six objectives, and it appears uh, just in, in part of your study. May, maybe it's not necessary to put it so high, or it is the, the main thing, then you should put it in the background, in the research gaps discussion, because in the research gaps you still do not mention knowledge intensive firms. Just, just a suggestion for you. Uh, no, I did. So the, the fourth one. So there. So yeah, and I, I said a little bit about this in motivation. Uh, okay, I, I, I t take your comment as a, as a comment. Uh, so I, I will try to like more. Um, if we, we could uh, see the, um, the model which, which unites all of your objectives, and then yeah, uh, 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 it was knowledge intensive firms. This focus is all the like, like the weak part of the of this. Uh, the whole punchline, but it's still uh, important because you know th there is a lot of ambiguity about knowledge intensive firms. So it, it, all, all of firms, in, to some extent, are knowledge intensive. But we need, uh, we wanted here to specifically focus on those firms that we know uh, for them knowledge and uh, expertise of their employees is f of specific importance. So, so those that basically compete on on labor market more than on uh, the uh, Final product market uh, competes on the basis of knowledge. So, and let me actually try to show the. And yeah, and um, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't put it on, on this slide. Uh, and the concepts of intellectual capital as mediating mechanism in, in all this uh, relationship or as dependent variable in our case uh, is also attrib attributed, can be attributed only to knowledge intensive firms. So we, we just can't uh, generalize to, to everything. So that is why. But uh, yeah, the, the com uh, difficulty was to name all this with some uh, suitable words. So, and in our case, it was uh, human resource management systems and knowledge intensive firms. But of course, these different papers are have different objectives. And can you specify? Maybe I just didn't see it in your main paper. Have you seen the difference between uh, knowledge intensive firms and? Not knowledge intensive firms. No, we we tried specifically to sample knowledge intensive firms from what we know from from the literature, from the industries that we know are, are also regarded as uh, knowledge intensive firms. So of course it is like uh, kind of limitation because th this was subjective to what what we think is knowledge intensive, but. Uh, I'm pretty sure about that those firms are specifically knowledge intensive. Those are different from those firms that uh, rely on, on manual labor or more in physical capital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I actually uh, I have to ration myself because I have lots of uh, questions and like comments, but um, uh, they're all quick and small ones. So to start with, I think. Um, you did mention the literature on human resource management practice bundles, uh -huh. which is an old literature, and John mm -hmm. Paul McDuffie uh -huh. is the name in that literature, and I didn't see him in your uh, in, 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 in the extensive list of your citations. So check him out. Oh, of course, uh, I did. He published uh, he published not so many papers, but the two papers that he did publish based on four plants on the HRM bundles are now classical, and I think you should draw on them much more heavily. Um, so uh, another quick comment is um, you, you you wanted to talk about combinations of HR management practices in knowledge intensive firms. You wanted to empirically identify the combinations of different elements of HR bundles. What I think is lacking in this approach is uh, sufficient contrast between the bundles of HRM practice in knowledge intensive firms and bundles of HRM practice in in non-knowledge intensive firms. Now, that's not a fair uh, comment on the one hand, because you, your sample is knowledge intensive firms. On the other hand, it is, I think, a fairly interesting direction for future research to collect samples from not knowledge intensive firms, redo the analysis, and see how significantly different these bundles are. 
so point number three, I think when you don't have enough statistical evidence to support a hypothesis, you don't reject it, you just not accept it. Uh, it's, it's just oh, you're, you're, you're right, actually, right? yeah. So it's not, it's not that the hypothesis is rejected, it's just you know, this is you not true. <laughs> power to, you know, your p-value is big or whatever, mm. so you didn't accept it, right? But that's terminological. Now, slightly less terminological is that, well, you have lots of hypotheses tested on a two, well, 215 observations. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, you should consult, it's not, it's, everything what I say is optional, right? Because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not your uh, assessor, <laughs> right? But you should, I think, you should try and consult the literature on multiple hypothesis testing. Because I think some corrections to the significance levels of your test statistics in the presence of multiple hypotheses tested on the same sample are well in order. Think about variations of the Bonferroni correction, for example, but okay. that's too conservative, so I, yeah, check it out. So here I, I relied on the PLS structural equation modeling and a very, very good book of the like dead of all this method is Hare and colleagues and uh, I actually like justify that this is quite enough for this kind of research. So, uh, so the, the, the main uh, like uh, thing that we should compare how much sample we have and how much variables we have and it, it's not that important how much hypothesis we have. So I, I here I tried okay, to. All your variables actually, you need to calculate the sum of all variables. You hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did. So, so <coughs> I'm sorry, I don't have this uh, conceptual model, but it is uh, three uh, in, independent variable plus three dependent variable plus two moderating uh, in total eight plus two controls. Uh, and uh, in, for partial least squares, it is probably times 10, so it is still uh, Yeah, but I, I agree actually with uh, Professor Zubana that perhaps you need to consult yourself more about you know, the statistical issues because now all ABS journals, I mean the top level journal, they are more demanding to the statistical, you know, uh, I would say sophistication and all this stuff, just, you know, because for me it looks quite simple. I mean, a model particularly uh, having only two controls uh, for human, social, and structural capital and thousands of, you know, papers published on this topic, I mean, in terms of antecedents or mm -hmm. those. I, I think it's not enough just have, I, I, I'm not sure because I'm not an expert in your field, but let me, uh, is it, this is it for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, thank yeah. you very much. I, I have several comments, yeah, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank you and congratulate you actually with your publications. Uh, I think this is a huge, you know, achievement. Uh, just having only three years of doctoral studies, uh, you have enough publications already. Uh, uh, no, not of them are published, so I put here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's great. Yeah, because, because you have R and R and all the stuff and publications in okay. uh, Russian journals, etc. Uh, yeah, may I just suggest you to uh, perhaps to restructure somehow, you know, your presentation for your future uh, uh, final defense procedure particularly because what I, I did, actually I would suggest first of all just try to formulate the research question. Even if you have, you know, different publications, but still you have an umbrella, just, you know, research question is an umbrella for all your objectives because now perhaps uh, you were so shy and just, you know, you, you put only uh, research objectives, but I believe you have your main research question or questions, uh, and then you can just, you know, show our research objectives. What is also, I would like to see uh, in your presentation, perhaps not too, I, I, I think uh, now you have too much, you know, uh, words about research gaps, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that you need, you need to, to uh, different slides about research gaps, etc. Perhaps uh, it would be uh, great to focus more on the main uh, idea. What is the main, I would say, problem, research problem, and perhaps start with knowledge-intensive companies and why it's important to 
uh, look and this human resource practices and intellectual capital and all other types of capitals which you are going to explore. And why it's very important now? Because now you, you have like a lot of uh, gaps, uh, but all of them too small for, for me just because you need to have like a, the big problem, okay. the big idea behind your research question. Why it sh actually, why should we care about it? Because for me, it's not enough for justification and motivation for research to have, okay, little evidence, little empirical evidence, but it doesn't mean that this is important. Perhaps little evidence because nobody cares anymore, for instance, about this, uh, you know, research question, etc. That's why you need to put like more evidence about this. Yeah, this is great problem. This is very important, uh, but not just uh, you know say okay there is a gap because a little evidence, a, little, a lack of research, uh, and also regarding the empirical part. Yeah, again, you have a lot of papers. And perhaps you can just, you know, have the research question and objectives and then please tell a story. Just not put in, okay, this is one paper and this is the main result, this is another mm -hmm. paper, the main result. I would put, you know, all your publication, the table with your publication by the end of the presentation, just showing, okay, this is the main findings on my studies, but here the main publications which I just, you know, I, I, I mean, based on this research and that's it. Or uh, the other way, you can just focus only on one most important paper, as Elvira mentioned, and say, okay, this is the most important paper, uh, which, uh, you know, is my finding, the most important findings of my research, because this is empirical. And a small uh, comment regarding your sample, uh, and you mentioned you, you have the sample from open database, this is Spark database? No, it is uh, rosfirm.ru. Yeah, please just mention, you need to put it okay. in the particular database you use as a, and how did you, uh, you know, create your sam final sample? Because now it's not clear for me, uh, did you try to approach all uh, 2,000 firms? And you got this response rate 215, or you just, I didn't understand how many firms you were trying to approach because it's very important for uh, response rate calculations. Could you, could you just uh, uh, clarify this point? Phone survey about Yeah, so 10% uh, out of 2,000. Uh, and, and, and you know the effective response rate? Uh, what does it mean, 10% response rate? Is it effective response rate that people just you know disagree? to answer or you couldn't reach them. Do you understand? Right? No, it's it including those who disagreed and yeah, th those. Yeah, you need to have okay. different, because for is effective response rate means that people uh, just disagree to uh, yeah. answer, or if you just couldn't reach, you know, the people, for instance, phone, you know, they didn't answer, etc., etc., or the, it was a wrong phone number, etc., it's, you cannot just, you cannot take it. Ah, okay. Down. Okay. Just look at this effective response. I'm not sure if, if, if I collected all this information, but okay, thank you. Okay, I'll, I will try to. Okay, more thank you very much. Comments, perhaps suggestions, please. Any comments? On the point of uh, on the point of sample selection, right? So the 10% response rate, I guess, is low, but it's within the usual. The usual, the usual standards. Um, how representative is your sample of the uh, of the 2,255 knowledge intensive firms that you were trying to reach? So, were smaller firms or larger firms more likely to respond, or is there no difference? Ideally, you should see no difference between the firms that, at least in some observable characteristics, between the firms that did and did not respond. Then you could say, well, uh, you could you could at least then lay a claim to some degree of external validity of your results. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now uh, we have done with you know questions and comments, and uh, now we have time for our discussion. Uh, Professor Gabriel Tatiana and Pietro, please. First of all, sorry for my voice. Uh, what can I say about the work? 
after reading, after looking at the presentation and then listening. You see, in general, it's a picture that we have some small time and as not very uh, experienced speaker, of course, Dmitry did not tell us all the things that are really in the work. Uh, so later on I can give some uh, private uh, recommendations about uh, the presentation and the talk. Uh, in general, I like the work. Mm. What I really like, I like the system approach. Uh, we all know what a mess in literature is in this field. Believe me, or don't know. It's really a mess. And to find such a concise and constructive view in all that literature was a big problem, but he managed. But unfortunately, we did not see that work. There is no, nothing I've heard here about the literature review. Mm. You should show us and then show in this literature review uh, overview that gap that you find really and that constructive approach, which is not an easy trick. Uh, another thing that um, I like, it is a mature view. When you read the work or some of the papers, you see that it is based on a deep analysis, not just impressionistic, uh, small blood. But it, it, it's really a view. I don't know how many uh, work was done before these three years, but for three years, it's impressive. Now, what I dislike? Uh, there were really few words about empirical study, even in the text. That's why your questions were appropriate. Because uh, empirical study is a big part of this work, and we should know more about the questions, really how they look like, what were the main scales, and uh, how big it was. It really depends how the scale is done. Another, um, these. Um, Think about codification and personalization. I like this approach because I like the old dichotomies. But it's not so easy because it's connected with the nature of knowledge. For example, codification is impossible for tacit knowledge. Mm -hmm. Personalization is. So they are not just which split the domain into parts, but they are a little bit deeper. Another is about, also questions, why about knowledge-intensive firms? On the defense, you should give us uh, the criteria you choose among different approaches to this. Because now, when we live in this economy, everybody may say that we are knowledge-intensive. There should be some valuable and uh, understandable, clear criteria. So my recommendation to improve um, to show better what is new, really. Mm -hmm. Then you should show a little bit more what was done before. Mm -hmm. And the literature review, it's an important part, and it was done, so it also should be shown. Mm -hmm. so that's all. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Say that you can say us. Uh, well, th those all of the comments were r really uh, on the target, so thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Dmitry Evgenievich, please hear you. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. <coughs> I would like to start my uh, reading two parts. In the beginning, I want to give my overall impressions about the paper. And then I want to give some comments how the paper could be improved. Uh, so the final thesis of Dmitry covers several areas, uh, important areas of human resource management theory and practice. And first, it contributes to very poorly developed uh, conceptual area of human resource management uh, system. Although human resource management scholars use the uh, term human resource management system as an existing one, there is lack of conceptual provision for this term. Uh, based on the extensive research of conceptual papers from strategic human resource management field, uh, which is done in the paper, but Dmitry missed it in his uh, oral part of the presentation, he gives his uh, own definition of human resource management system, 
like the set of human resource management practices and policies integrated to support strategic and operational goals of the organization. Uh, secondly, I really like the research object, uh, the professional services firms, uh, and uh, they seem to be relevant to contemporary business needs because of the considerable growth of knowledge intensive firms. And uh, in the thesis, uh, there is enough evidence of the critical role uh, these firms uh, play in the modern knowledge economy. Uh, next, I really like the conceptual framework. Again, it was missed in the oral part of the presentation, but it is presented in the uh, hard copy of the text uh, about the groups of human resource management practices, ability, motivation, and opportunity, its relationship with knowledge management strategies, and uh, its impact on intellectual capital uh, resources. Uh, next, I really like the empirical research design, which is presented uh, in the uh, paper HRM Systems. And intellectual capital is the relationship for universal. Uh, firstly, I like it because it's based on the quantitative research design and it completely corresponds with the similar previous research in the chosen area. Uh, the methodology and uh, result sections are well reasoned. At the same time, there is uh, the personal author's contribution because he added uh, codification and personalization. Uh, knowledge management strategies, and he explained it like the moderators between particular groups of human resource management practices and specific intellectual uh, resources. And uh, the last thing I want to stress, it's about uh, the papers already published in highly ranked Russian journals, as well as they submitted in APS list, uh, highly ranked journals. I also have some comments. I will um, define them not like the weak points, yeah, the points which can be taken into the account to improve uh, the paper. Most of them, uh, they are presented in my review like uh, some questions. Yeah, that's why how it would be better to uh, communicate. I will produce the question and then you will respond. Or I can give you the text of my review. Well, mm -hmm. Either way, mm -hmm. you, you may stress the most important thing. Okay, I will give you uh, okay. a copy of my review. Yeah. So, uh, first thing is uh, that it's very beneficial that you uh, you talk about traditional and strategic human resource management. This is the point number one. But I would rather uh, recommend you to replace traditional human resource management to uh, functional human resource uh, management yeah. because it's more popular term in practice and in conceptual research. And this is about how separate Function. human resource management practice influences individual performance. So what do you think about it? So I... I, I uh, Th thank you for for this comment. I think yeah, fu functional is uh, more. more I, I met this in the literature. So and traditional, I don't. Th th this is completely my word. So yeah. Yeah, because this is an academic paper, and it's better to use some academic. Sure, paper, sure. Like traditional yeah, 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 chart, functional chart. So the second thing it's about. Uh, I would recommend you to use some secondary data to visualize the growth of knowledge intensive and particularly okay. professional services firms. So add some statistics here yeah, to show what happens in uh, contemporary economy in Russia and world War. So next, uh, I have uh, the same comments which uh, some of the uh, participants mentioned about the context of the research, which covers knowledge economy, knowledge intensive firms, and professional services firms. My question is about the composition of uh, knowledge uh, intensive firms, about the right or wrong proportion of knowledge intensive firms with some other types of firms in knowledge economy. And of course, because you are talking about performance, yeah, I'm uh, uh, really uh, interested in some performance indicators for knowledge intensive firms and in uh, professional services firms, a particular type of knowledge intensive. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, I will go on and then I guess we will give some feedback. Then you use some terms uh, when you are talking about the outputs, you talk about ethics, you're talking about performance, you talk about the outcomes. Well, this is the dissertation economics. Yeah, I want to know is it the same or uh, there are yeah. some differences? Yeah? Just use one more yeah. performance, for instance. Uh, also, I have some comments about the objective number two. Could you please, yeah. could you please move to your slide? Yeah.
yeah, uh, objective number two, I feel a little bit confused because to my mind, system, uh, HRS, HRM system, consists of practices, policies, and strategies. Yeah, that's why I will, uh, I would recommend you to exclude practices yeah, from this statement. Hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah the, the HRM systems includes all the practices, but uh, here in this specific objective, I just, uh, yeah, uh, this is about the third paper where I integrated the literature, which may consider individual practices or may consider the whole systems. So it was like the very uh, integrative work how to uh, capture everything together. So that, that is why probably, I, I first I formulated the first initial uh, objective uh, and th then I did this research and went back and uh, reformulated it so, so put system. But I, I think it is still okay if I put uh, leave only uh, system, so it is still true. And could you also please uh, move back to the uh, slide of objectives, yeah? Because to my mind it's reasonable to add one more. Yeah, you are talking about knowledge management strategies, yeah? And uh, that's why for empirical objectives, I would recommend you to add one more to identify knowledge management strategies in knowledge intensive firms. Because actually you talk about, it's stated in the objective number four, yeah, you are talking about some configuration between system and knowledge management strategies. But in the beginning, I guess it's reasonable to identify knowledge management strategies, okay, and then talk about some configurations. Yeah, and the last thing is, uh, again, about some conceptual issues. In your uh, paper, you are talking about uh, strategic knowledge management and knowledge management. What are the differences between strategic knowledge management and knowledge management? Overall, my evaluation is quite positive. I really like the paper. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, now we have some time for like more questions, comments, and uh, suggestions. If you have any, please. Uh, yeah. Not, uh, thank you again, uh, Dmitriev. Uh, I think it was a very good start for our new research seminars uh, uh, done by our doctoral students. And again, please, uh, just for, for the, our next presenters, just keep in mind, again, motivation, a research question, not only just a gap, right, but a big idea behind your research and how you can combine different publications under, you know, this one bigger umbrella. And then just you can focus on the, uh, your main findings and also please remember about the main contributions. And first of all, I would like to hear, hear, uh, hear uh, about uh, theoretical contribution. And I, 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 I know you have a lot of contributions, but you didn't show uh, us I uh, in, in this presentation. But still, I, I really appreciate because you're the, our first presenter. And now we can uh, learn more how to, you know, present, you know, better I, your main finding. Because, again, I would like to congratulate you. Just I'm very impressed by your uh, publications Thank and you. two different empirical research, and or even three, right? Because yeah. you have three already papers based on qualitative study and two on quantitative. Yeah, study, but right? the data is uh, more, more or less the same. Yeah, it doesn't matter actually. But uh, you already have. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, and also uh, I'll talk to our students. I just distributed several, you know, handouts uh, with our uh, new brochure about our lab, the sixth international doctoral workshop on innovation and entrepreneurship. Actually, it's not only innovation and entrepreneurship, but our Finnish partners they just, you know, published this. Um, booklets and please uh, don't uh, forget about the deadline, the 15th of April. Just only one page abstract in order to um, show me that you are ready, you will be ready perhaps in May to submit your full paper. And I, I believe it will be one of the best our research workshop because now we have all those, you know, very nice versions. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much.